Throughout the long and storied history of PlayStation, Sony's family of devices has played host to countless games that have offered up some truly amazing boss fights that stand out in our memories to this day. Either because of how dramatic they were, or how challenging they were, or how fun they were, or any number of other reasons. In this feature, we're going to talk about 15 such boss fights. Do note that there will be spoilers ahead for all games mentioned in this feature, so if we're talking about a game you want to avoid spoilers for, go ahead and skip to the next entry. Kronos, God of War 3. The Kronos boss fight in God of War 3 is the perfect encapsulation of everything this series is about. The sheer scope of this entire fight is simply staggering, and the brutality that Kratos exhibits while taking the Titan down, from ripping off his fingernail to stabbing him through the throat, are the epitome of that era of God of War. In God of War 2018, when Atreus sees a dragon and asks Kratos if he can kill something that big, it's hard not to laugh and immediately think back to the time that he killed a creature, literally the size of a mountain. Red Maw Thunderjaw, Horizon Zero Dawn The idea of fighting against mechanical beasts and dinosaurs is an exciting one, and it's one that Horizon Zero Dawn does absolute justice to. You only need to fight one Thunderjaw to realize just how well it does that. And while fighting against any Thunderjaw is a complete rush, the fight against Red Maw Thunderjaw, which isn't even a part of the main questline, is perhaps the best Thunderjaw fight in the game. Equipped with all of the deadly weapons and attributes of a regular Thunderjaw, but with the added health and capacity to deal more damage to boot, the Red Maw Thunderjaw is as fearsome as its name suggests. Sephiroth, Final Fantasy VII Remake <laughs> With Final Fantasy VII Remake only telling a fraction of the original game's story, you would have thought that Sephiroth might not have figured into things too much, especially not as the game's final boss. But he did, and surprisingly enough, he didn't feel like he had been shoehorned into a part of the story where he had no place. Sephiroth's added role in the Midgar section of the story feels organic, and nothing exemplifies that better than the final fight against him. Combat is perhaps Final Fantasy VII Remake's greatest strength, and during this fight, combat shines, combining flair, flash, mechanical depth, and challenge for a breathtaking encounter. Joe Amon, Yakuza 6 The Song of Life Probably one of the most challenging boss fights in the Yakuza series. With a combination of his hard-hitting attacks and his drones, Joe Amon can kick Kiryu in the blink of an eye which means being on top of your game in terms of reflexes is an absolute must during this fight. And as is the case with any well-designed, truly challenging boss fight, there's nothing quite like the gratification you get when you actually beat it. Given the fact that this is a secret boss, many players might never have even squared off against him. If that is true in your case, do yourself a favor and go seek him out. Dr. Octopus, Marvel Spider-Man. Parker. You knew? I tried to warn you, Peter, but you didn't listen. You knew? Insomniac's take on Spider-Man is probably one of the best Spider-Man stories ever told, which isn't praise that's easily given. And the final fight against Otto Octavius feels like the perfect way to cap that story off. From a narrative standpoint, the stakes feel ridiculously high on a macro level, while on a more personal note, watching Peter have to fight against a man he has looked up to so much feels truly gut-wrenching. It also helps, of course, that the boss fight is also incredibly fun to play through, from swinging around on top of the tower to finishing things off while hanging on the side of a skyscraper. Orphan of Koss, Bloodborne Trying to pinpoint a single boss fight in Bloodborne as the best the game has to offer is no easy task, but Orphan of Koss pretty much forces you to give it that recognition. It's that good. During this fight, Bloodborne is at its absolute best in every way possible. The lore surrounding the Orphan is suitably messed up, the boss's visual design is absolutely horrific, and boy does the fight put all of your skills to the test. 
and it's not even in the base game. Seriously, if you haven't played the old Hunters, you need to make it a priority just so you can experience this fight. It's from software at their very best, which is very, very high praise. Colossus of Rhodes, God of War 2. God of War 2 gave everything it had to being bigger and better than its predecessor in every way possible, and it wasted no time in letting its players know that that was what it was trying to do. Right off the bat, it threw Kratos into a fight against an actual, literal colossus, and it was absolutely glorious. Every phase of this fight was an absolute joy, and was absolutely brimming with the scope and ingeniousness that always characterizes God of War's boss fights. Liquid Ocelot Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. We still have a score to settle. As the final fight in the chronology of the Metal Gear series, and a fight that was the culmination of years of dramatic and often convoluted storytelling, Old Snake's brawl against Liquid Ocelot atop Outer Haven had a lot to live up to, and boy did it match those expectations, and then some. It was a mechanically solid fight, sure, but more than anything else, it was a shining example of Kojima's storytelling chops. The dramatic tension that permeated through each frame as Snake and Liquid beat each other to a pulp felt like a perfectly fitting send-off for their long-standing enmity. The Rat King, The Last of Us Part 2 The Last of Us isn't a series that puts too much stock in boss fights, instead opting to put players through their paces in tense, set-piece moments or encounters to cap off arcs. But Naughty Dog indulged their players, and themselves, with an unusual boss fight in The Last of Us Part 2. And we're really glad that they did, because Abby's encounter against the monstrous amalgamation referred to as the Rat King was pure genius. The hospital section was already dripping with dread and tension, and having it end with a fight against a nightmarish creature ripped straight out of a Resident Evil fan's dream was an absolutely brilliant move on Naughty Dog's part. Alistair Azimuth, Ratchet and Clank, A Crack in Time Probably the best boss fight in any Ratchet and Clank game, not only does this encounter manage to strike the perfect balance between being fun and being challenging, it also feels like an excellent payoff for a Crack in Time story. Having to fight against a character that has so much personal weight in Ratchet's story feels suitably dramatic, and the game itself too does an excellent job of framing that in a truly cinematic way without having to sacrifice anything in terms of gameplay. That's something that so many games struggle with so often, and for that alone, this fight deserves a ton of recognition. Flame Lurker, Demon Souls. The quintessential Demon Souls boss. Menacing visual design? Check. A varied and deadly moveset? Check. Captivating lore? Check. The Flame Lurker isn't the deadliest boss you'll find in the game. He's especially weak to magic. And with the right strategy, you can take him down without too much difficulty. But a combination of all the things we mentioned just before makes him an enemy that we cannot help but admire. Baldur, God of War 2018. Not having enough boss fights is one of God of War 2018's few failings, but the few that it does have are amazing. The game is bookended by encounters against Baldur, and while both are great in their own right, the final fight deserves special praise. Not only is it a cinematic spectacle, it also combines that spectacle with mechanical strength, and above all, excellent narrative payoff. Phalanx, Shadow of the Colossus. As one of the greatest games ever made that is defined by nothing but its boss fights, we could have included any or all of Shadow of the Colossus's bosses in this list. Phalanx, the 13th Colossus, is our pick because of how well it captures that game's scope and beauty. Going up against this absolutely gargantuan beast and climbing atop its body while it peacefully flies through the air feels exhilarating, and no fight in the game comes close to the sheer thrill of trying to kill a beast that's flying hundreds of feet in the air and trying to shake you off its body while you try to bring it down. Hiruko, Shinobi 
Sometimes you want a boss to challenge you in ways nothing else in the game has, and put everything that you've learned in the game up until that point to the test. That's something that stands doubly true for final boss fights, and in that, Shinobi's final fight against Haruko is an unequivocal success. This encounter is the very definition of challenging. Even if you know exactly what you have to do to beat him, actually putting that knowledge to use is easier said than done. Shinobi as a whole may not have been a standout success, but at least it closed things off with a bang. Nyx, Persona 3 the Persona series has no shortage of amazing boss fights, moments when narrative weight, true challenge, and engaging turn-based mechanics come together in perfect harmony, but it's hard to think of a single fight in that series that feels as climactic and weighty as Persona 3's final boss. Nick's threat looms large over the fate of the entire world, and this fight captures those stakes perfectly. Is it long? Very. Is it challenging? Quite a bit. Does it have absolutely banger music? Hell yes. It's the perfect mixture of all of Persona's greatest strengths. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.